We studied before respiration and excretion. We already know that some substances need to get inside of the cell and some substances want to get out of the cell. So these substances which want to, to get inside of the cell, uh, like oxygen, how we have um, water and food. Uh, when these substances enter the cell, uh, respiration, uh, respiration takes place and a chemical reaction just happens and then we have some substances which we want to get rid of like uh, carbon dioxide and other waste like uh, nitrogenous waste so how these substances get inside of the cell and how these substances leave the cell how the these substances get in and out so how we're going to speak about movement in and out of the cell movement in and out of the cell we have uh, two mechanism for that we have passive transport and we have active transport this passive transport uh, happens from high concentration high can concentration to low to lower concentration to low concentration and active transport is the opposite it happens from a uh, low concentration low concentration to high so it is is the opposite to high concentration is the opposite this is the concentration gradient so act uh, passive transport happens from high to low and active transport happens from low to high it's like just you have a ball or something in your hand if you want to drop it down uh, you do not need to use energy but if you throw something from down to up you need energy so uh, passive transport does not know no energy does not use energy but active transport uses energy because it happens against the concentration gradient. Here we have example for this. We have uh, like diffusion, diffusion, and osmosis. And this, what we are going to study with some details in the coming slides here. Uh, here diffusion, diffusion. We're going to look at diffusion. Is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration, high concentration to an area of low concentration low concentration uh, if you look here we have high concentration of these particles let's say this is oxygen oxygen we have high concentration of oxygen outside of the cell this is a cell inside of the cell there is no that much concentration so out of the cell we have higher concentration inside of the cell we have like a lower concentration so these uh, particles are going to diffuse in into the cell and this is how this is going to happen like these particles just diffuse and get into the cell through the cell membrane this cell membrane allow these particles to diffuse so and this is about diffusion if you have outside high concentration it gets in uh, but after that like a chemical reaction takes place when we got oxygen and we have here high concentration of carbon dioxide but outside of the cell there's not that much of concentration so these particles are going to diffuse out of the cell so carbon dioxide here co2 is gone to diffuse out of the cell because it has high concentration inside of the cell more than uh, outside uh, inside the cell more than outside of the cell so the particles just simply will diffuse and how we're going to look there at the importance of diffusion of gases and uh, solutes so gases here we have oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen gets into the cell carbon dioxide gets out of the cell by diffusion but in plant cell in plant cells uh, carbon dioxide gets inside of the cell and oxygen 
goes out of the cell by diffusion. Also, uh, oxygen just gets in and carbon dioxide gets out uh, in respiration in plants by diffusion. Another thing, we have water. Water diffuses uh, outside of the plant uh, cells uh, through these uh, stomata by diffusion water vapor just uh, if the plant has too much water or maybe it wants to cool itself down just water leaves the cells through stomata by diffusion and uh, uh, the importance of diffusion of solutes some ions like uh, like magnesium ions magnesium ions which make chlorophyll in plants and other like nitrate ions these ions uh, are observed but uh, they, they just go this is a tree maybe here yeah, we we have the roots they will go to to the roots by diffusion but most of these uh, uh, ions just go by active active transport so transport so some of them go to the uh, plant tissues by diffusion but others and most of them go by active transport because maybe you don't have that uh, much concentration outside in the soil of these minerals but the plant needs these uh, minerals so active transport is going to take place here uh, after that we have vitamins in the bloodstream this is if you have the in the bloodstream this is the blood so vitamins like b and c these vitamins are absorbed to the blood by diffusion also here we have urea and salts in the kidney kidneys urea and uh, ure, urea and salts and uh, these get into and out of the blood from uh, through the kidney by diffusion they just keep uh, diffusing and that's how blood is filtered how we have dialysis machine this machine if someone has kidney failure uh, then uh, uh, his blood's going to run through this uh, machine and this machine uses diffusion to remove these substances from uh, his blood and glucose glucose reabsorption happens by diffusion uh, but most, uh, most of it happens by active transport so diffusion diffusion and active transport this glucose the goes uh, uh, glucose uh, reabsorption happens by diffusion and active transport and that is it about the uh, substances which diffuse now the rate of diffusion some substances can the rate of diffusion can be high or or low uh, there are some factors that uh, affect this rate of diffusion here the first one one is distance so if the distance is close this is okay this is the place where the particles will diffuse to and the, let's say just this uh, example we have the cell and this is the place where the particles will diffuse let's say a uh, capillary or blood stream so if the if this uh, the distance between them is not a uh, big distance there is no great distance then diffusion will be high so closer closer distance higher diffusion farther distance lower diffusion if you have distance like this the particles which will diffuse from here to there are going to be less than the particles if you have something here will diffuse uh, to the cell from here to here the distance is not that big so diffusion will will be higher then we have concentration if you have high concentration outside of the cell high concentration of these particles then more diffusion will take place if you have lower concentration inside of the cell also higher a uh, high dif uh, high rate of diffusion high concentration high diffusion low concentration low uh, diffusion then we have surface area if you have let's say a, a cell which is like this big and here the blood stream then you can see the distance here great distance so the, these particles will diffuse from here to here to here 
So there is much, much more place where they can diffuse. But if you have small uh, surface area like this one, this cell, okay, only small amount of the particles will diffuse because there is no much uh, space where they can diffuse. So uh, let's say larger, larger surface area, higher diffusion, uh, smaller, a smaller surface area, lower diffusion. Then we have size of particles. If the particles are big, we studied before uh, in chemistry about the kinetic theory of uh, matter. We say heavier, uh, bigger particles move slower. Uh, lighter particles move faster so these particles because they are big they're going to move slowly and also the membrane will not allow these big particles to pass easily but if you have small particles here look these small particles will diffuse easily will move faster will diffuse also faster also the temperature we spoke about the temperature if you have high temperature if the temperature is high these particles will move faster will vibrate more often then they will move faster then they will diffuse faster high temperature high rate of diffusion low temperature low rate of diffusion and these are the factors that affect the rate of diffusion and this is about diffusion in the next uh, uh, video we're going to look at osmosis until then ciao